Listen everybody To the words I have to say Better get ready Because the Lord is coming one day Thank you for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is Daniel White IV, the eldest son of Daniel White III. The intro music that you just heard is my late grandfather, Daniel White Jr., singing a song titled Get Ready. Today, my father, Daniel White III, is going to share with you news and information relating to biblical prophecy so that you can be prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books, including Just Jesus and The Prayer Motivator. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in 23 foreign countries, and is the president of Gospelite Society and Torch Ministries International. Now, here's your host, Daniel White III. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is Report number 283. My name is Daniel White III, here to remind you that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back soon and that you need to be prepared. This broadcast is not about predictions, nor is it about setting dates as some foolishly have done. However, it is all about preparation. First today, let's look at some signs of his coming in the news. The disciples asked the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, 3, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus Christ then went on to give them and us clear signs that show us when we can begin to expect to see the coming of the Lord and the end of the world as we know it. Looking at world events through the lens of the Word of God, let's look at some headlines from today's news that point to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. First up today, according to the Associated Press, for 20 years, fears about North Korea's headlong pursuit of nuclear bombs have been deflected by admonishments not to overestimate an impoverished dictatorship prone to bragging and tantrums. However, after three nuclear tests of apparently increasing power and a long-range rocket launch that puts it a big step closer to having a missile that can carry a nuclear warhead to American shores, many believe that in a matter of years, as little as five, though the time frame is debated, North Korea will have a very scary nuclear arsenal. One respected South Korean expert says North Korea could be working toward 80 to 100 nuclear-tipped missiles. Kurt Campbell, the former top U.S. diplomat for Asia said, where in the past there may have been some ambiguity about what North Korea was seeking to achieve. There is a clear recognition that they are pressing toward a nuclear capability with a potential longer range delivery. Second today, according to the Tehran Times, At least one person has been killed and 17 others injured in a strong earthquake that struck southern Iran on Saturday morning. According to the Iranian Seismological Center, the quake measured 6.2 on the Richter scale. The head of province's crisis management organization said, that the earthquake had damaged water and electricity networks in the area. 
According to reports, a number of villages have been damaged to a large extent as well. Third today, according to the Associated Press, Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood staged an anti-Israel rally in Cairo on Friday, the first such protest by the main backers of President Mohammed Morsi since they rose to prominence in the wake of of the country's 2011 uprising. Emerging from weekly services at Al-Azhar Mosque, the centuries-old seat of Sunni Muslim learning, demonstrators chanted, the people want the destruction of Israel in protest of recent Israeli airstrikes in Syria. And the detention of a Palestinian Muslim cleric. At one point, a leading Brotherhood member took the microphone and shouted, We will repeat it over and over. Israel is our enemy. Others echoed the call, and one organizer whipped up the crowd in a chant urging the army to launch a war against Israel to liberate Palestine. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can read these stories in more detail and get more Second Coming related news on our website at secondcomingherald.com. Now it's time for Prophecy Boot Camp. Prophecy Boot Camp is where we deal with the basics of prophecy, the second coming of Christ, and what will happen in the future according to the Bible. Our aim here is not to make predictions, but to help you get prepared by understanding how things will unfold in the end times. Our topic for today is titled, The Political Rule of Christ, from Dr. John MacArthur's book, The Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ's rule on earth during the millennium will be universal. He is going to reign over the whole earth. Psalm chapter 2, verses 6 through 8 says, Yet have I met my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Christ's millennial reign will also be absolute. He will not tolerate rebellion, and he will rule with a rod of iron. Psalm 72, 9-11 says, They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and his enemies shall lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Ye all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. Christ's millennial reign will also be righteous. He will not rule as an unrighteous dictator. His rule will be a righteous dictatorship. Isaiah 11, 3 and 4 says, He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge. Jesus Christ will rule universally, absolutely, and righteously. I believe the most wonderful thing that could ever happen to this world would be to bring it into unity under one leader. If it was the right leader, the finest government in the world would be a dictatorship with Jesus Christ as the king, as the dictator. Ladies and gentlemen, we will continue looking at this topic in our next broadcast, if the Lord tarries his coming, and we live. In closing, let's consider what God wants you and I to do in light of his second coming. 
Jesus Christ said in Luke 19.13, To occupy till I come. Please listen to the following from Jack Van Impey on why Christians should strive not to be ashamed at Christ's coming. Listen to the list of good works Paul accumulated, accumulated in 2 Corinthians 11, 23-27. He said, In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft, of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with the rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. What a servant of God, beaten, battered, stoned, crushed, robbed, persecuted, hated, and starved. Surely this portfolio of earned works would bring Paul heaven's greatest Oscar, if you will. It would if he remained faithful. Remember, he said, if I do not keep my body under and bring it into subjection, I myself shall be a castaway, disapproved and rejected for heaven's academy awards, so to speak. Therefore I fight the good fight of faith, Fight the world, the flesh, and the devil, so that my Savior will say to me in that day, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. How about you, dear Christian friend? Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your love, mercy, and grace towards us. And Lord, we love you back. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is coming back. Help us to continue to look for him and help us to live for him. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen.